There are far worse things Great men Than death What's up, my wizards? It's Dev. As BMTG, down there we like magic. And we are just getting over the Pro Tour hype right now. Still, you know, it's a really exciting Pro Tour. Whole new standard emerged from the ashes of Mardu vehicles and cat combo. It's an exciting time to be a magic player. All that's great, but Pro Tour also means that you're probably just about sick of super expensive decks that you might not be able to afford if you're anything like me. <laughs> so today I'm going to bring you a budget deck. It's only going to cost you about 30 bucks, and it's actually exceeded expectations <laughs> as far as testing goes. I did not expect this deck to be as good as it turned out to kind of be. Today I'm going to bring you $30 Red, White, and Bomb. Well, the whole idea here is that we're going to use Embalm guys an awful lot of Embalm guys, you know, and we're going to pair those with red cards that make us discard cards, because those cards are usually super powerful, but having to discard sucks, but in this case, we can just discard a guy with Embalm and play him later, and it's like we didn't really even lose the card at all, so without further ado, let me go ahead and show you this deck. Let me start by telling you about all of our Embalm dudes. We're playing 25 creatures in the deck, and 22 of them can Embalm, you know. If you thought Scrap Heap Scrounger was a headache, or Dread Wanderer for that matter, imagine if nearly every single creature in your deck can come back, you know. Against a lot of builds, that's going to cause a fair amount of trouble. So let's start at the lower end of the curve here. We'll work our way up. And I'm going to use the power of graphics here in slides so that... I don't cover up my giant head with cards. It's very easy to do that. I can't fit three cards on screen at the same time because I have an enormous head. So with that in mind, here's a graphic for you. <laughs> We're going to play four copies of Sacred Cat, four copies of True Heart Duelist, and four copies of Anointer Priest in the deck. Well, first of all, all three of these creatures have a couple of things in common. One, they all cost either one or two mana. They're all very, very cheap. We can get set up in the early game with them very easily. That's important, but more importantly, Two, all of them allow us in some form or another to get into those later turns. You know, we've got a lot of creatures that either cost five mana or embalm for five mana. We want to be able to embalm a creature and get in a spell some turns. So we're a fairly hungry deck and we have stuff to do all the way up until turn five, six, seven a lot of the time. So we have to get to those turns. And Sacred Cat can chump block twice and gain us life both times. True Heart Duelist can fog <laughs> everything on the ground and die, yes, but come back at least once to do it again. Not bad at all. And Anointer Priest can gain us life whenever we embalm a creature. And getting multiple priests out is actually pretty sweet. So in effect, none of these creatures here are extremely aggressive or anything, but they will help us get into the later turns, which are the best turns for us. You know, in turn five, we start doing some really impressive stuff. So we want to get to those later turns against some decks, and these will help us do that. Hey everybody, what's up? It's my face again right here. Um, I'm going to move on though. To the three copies of Unwavering Initiate that we're playing in the deck, and yeah, the cards aren't like super impressive or anything, but it's on theme and we're a budget deck. So, you know, sometimes... You play some subpar cards. The card is still at least a fine blocker. You don't always want it for five mana, but three mana is at least a decent deal for it. I'm going to play three whole surprising copies of Oketra's Attendant in this deck. Um, at first, I was just playing two copies, um, but I'm actually considering playing a whole four of this thing because sometimes you just want to draw a card. Sometimes you just want to draw a card and there's not a whole lot of things in the deck that do that. You know, you can also like discard it to a lightning axe or something and then you just have like a 3-3 three, three flyer sitting in your graveyard for waiting for the right time to come out. So that's also not bad either. And like, honestly, some games a 3-3 three, three flyer twice is also pretty good. So like, Catcher's Attendant has been surprisingly effective because it just does a lot of stuff, you know? It's not Thraven Inspector or anything. But it is a body that can sometimes draw you a card or just be a 3-3 three, three flyer twice. Like, you can't really be too mad at a Catcher's Attendant. It's a good, decent card, it turns out. But we're actually going to play four copies of another five drop here because it is the absolute best card in the deck, and that is Angel of Sanctions. You know, for budgetary reasons, I started with just two copies of Angel of Sanctions. So I started building this deck, it was like six bucks. Now it's down to like four, 425 on TCG players. So it's not a bad deal at all. I've decided to up it to four copies because it is easily the best card in the entire deck. This comes down on turn five and snags something. And if they manage to remove the angel, you can always just play it again and snag something better, perhaps. That's really good, you guys. <laughs> Try this card out. You know, when I was just playing two, um, I got to a point where just I always wanted to see this card. Every single game, 
every single draw. <laughs> I just want to draw an angel like every turn. So I think it's a no-brainer four of, and even though it's more or less the most expensive card in the deck, it is, one more time, the best card within Bomb, probably, unless you want to count like Honored Hydra, but this is, my, this is probably even better. So just play this card. I promise you, it is the truth. The card is awesome. But to finish off the creatures, I'm actually going to move a few spots back on the curve and talk about the three copies of Blood Rage Brawler because it's a good segue away from the Embalm guys and into the stuff that makes us discard them. Now, I like this guy in this deck for a couple of different reasons. Obviously, we can just discard like a Fiery Temper or an Embalm Guide to him, and it will mostly negate any disadvantages that we have in having to discard a card to him. So he's just, he just fulfills a good role. But also, note that most of our 1 and 2 drops are all defensive cards, you know? Something like Anointer Priest or even True Heart Duelist on a relatively empty board early game is not going to really give you too much advantage, not going to give you too much initiative. But this guy... All the initiative in the world, drop him on turn two onto a, an empty board, a board that hopefully will stay empty for a turn or two. And this guy can deal 8 or 12 damage before you know it. Just a really, really aggressive piece. We've got a bunch of stuff in the deck that's just one or two power at this spot on the curve, at two on the curve. This guy can come down in some games as an aggressive option, and that's just really, really important for a deck that does not strike very fast. With, Bro with Blood Rage Brawler, we can if we need to. And not to mention that Brawler can also be a somewhat decent defensive option. Sure, we, quote, lose a card to him. And if we play our cards right, lol, we won't actually lose a card to him. There will be no actual disadvantage to discarding a card to him if we do this right. But he can be played as a defensive option, is all I'm saying. You know, big meaty body on turn two that they're, gonna, that they're either going to have a hard time trading with or definitely trade their biggest guy with, you know, in the early game. So this can also be something that helps you get to those later turns so that you can do what the deck really wants to do. But moving on to the spells here, and every single one of these spells is red, and they're all some form of removal here, you know. It's important, I think, for our game plan to play a fair amount of removal because, again, in the early game, we're just trying to sort of set up and get to. These later turns will have creatures to chump block, stuff that gains us life, a Norner Priest. We'll have True Heart Duelist to block everything a couple of times. We're just trying to get into the later turns, and removal can help us do that too, you know? We want to basically blow away the first couple of things that they play, and that'll set us up to where we can start playing our Embalm guys. We can start embalming our Embalm guys, you know, and just get on board after we've sort of controlled their early turns. So, important to play removal. Let me show it to you. We're going to play four copies of Lightning Axe, four copies of Fiery Temper, and two copies of Nahiri's Wrath in the deck. Bet you didn't see that coming. But first of all, Lightning Axe is just one mana for something that can take out nearly anything <laughs> in the format, you know. It can take out zombies that even get relatively big. It can take out um, a Verderous Gear Hulk with its trigger on the stack. That's somewhat important. It can take out a Heart of Kirin. That's nice. Add instant speed. And we're just going to discard a Fiery Temper to it, ideally. That's always nice. Take out another guy. Maybe burn them to the face or hit a Planeswalker. Really versatile there, and it only costs two mana to go Lightning Axe, Fiery Temper, or... With Lightning Axe, we can just discard an Embalm guy and play him a turn or two later. Or on, like, turn two, even, <laughs> we can, you know, play a Lightning Axe discarding um, a Sacred Cat and then just play the Sacred Cat that same turn. That's not a bad play, either. But bottom line, Lightning Axe is just the cheapest form of removal we can play that takes out, like, 90-some-odd percent of the important creatures in the format and lets us squeeze in other plays on the same turn that we play it. So, it's a really, really important card for the deck. Gotta play all four. Same thing with Fiery Temper, you know, obviously goes really well with Lightning Axe and Brawler and Nahiri's Wrath, for that matter. Can take out Planeswalkers, can hit players to the face, and can take out, you know, small to middle creatures. So, just everything Fiery Temper does is sweet if we're going to be discarding cards, we might as well play a playset. But Nahiri's Wrath is the interesting one here, and actually, I did not expect this card to perform very well. I have never been a huge fan of this, but just for shiggles, I decided to put it in the deck um, as a two-of, and I feel like we should probably keep it at a two-of if we're going to play it at all. I don't feel like it's going to be better in um, at more copies, honestly. But with just the two copies, we can often wipe the entire other side of the board just by discarding two or three cards. You know, discard a couple of Embalm guys and a land. Maybe discard an Embalm guy, a Fiery Temper and a land. And suddenly you're dealing like six damage to three targets and you can just get that Embalm guy back. You know, and obviously you didn't lose any value off the Fiery Temper that you discarded. So, just Nahiri's Wrath is great. It is the, 
the perfect thing actually for this deck in again getting to those mid-range turns and not just getting run over by aggro you know we've got some fairly subpar guys in the early turns and yeah we should be very um it should be very easy to curve out and play a guy every turn especially turns two turn three should be very easy to curve out but this gives us a way to just on turn three reset the board state put a couple of guys in the graveyard that we can get back put a couple of guys in their graveyard that they cannot get back very important play Here's your lands right here. Pretty easy, you know, some mountains and some plains. And this is the first place that I would recommend, you know, changing things. <laughs> if you're going to try and make this a little bit more competitive, you know, you want to shore up that mana base. So if you've got them or you've got the dough, add the inspiring vantages, add the needle spires, do that. <laughs> but, you know, aside from that, we get by on this. We don't really need more than one red source unless, of course, you want to hard cast a fiery temper. But for the most part, we get along on one red source fairly easily. So this mana base works. But again, you want to spend some money, recommend upgrading it before you do anything else. Here's our sideboard right here. We've got Fragmentize and Forsake the Worldly. And I'm actually thinking about putting Forsake the Worldly into the main deck. I know it costs three mana, but we can always cycle it away um, if we don't need it at the time. And I'd like something else that helps us draw cards in this deck. TBH, so that's something to consider. But it can also take out Heart of Kirins. It can take out marbles that they can't spin or have already spinned and don't have the energy to do so again. It can also, importantly, I think right now, take out Liliana's Mastery, which is something that we don't have a whole lot of main deck options in standard for doing something about. So for Sake the Worldly is almost main deckable, but three mana is kind of an awful lot for a very narrow spell. But again, luckily you can cycle it. The Magma Sprays are in there against zombies, <laughs> obviously, and I'm considering carrying all four Magma Sprays. This can also take out Scrap Heap Scroungers, which is important, but against things like Relentless Dead and Dread Wanderer, if you can catch them before they get any buffs, or maybe with the Lord of the Undead on the stack, you know, you can play a Magma Spray. This can be invaluable against these zombies that just continue to keep coming back, because that's our game. We don't want anybody else doing that. We want to be doing that. The Tormenting Voice are mostly just there to have something to put in when we have to take out our removal. In the control matchup, which is probably not going to be as prevalent as it was during the preseason after the Pro Tour here, but you still will run across control decks every now and again, especially at FNMs. People love control. So against control, you have to take out your removal a lot of the time. you got to have something to put in, and Tormenting Voice is something to give you some card selection and help you get to the pieces you need, while still discarding Embalm guys for value. But against control a lot of the time, you won't want to discard as many Embalm guys. You know, you want them both times if you possibly can. And then Cast Out and Fumigate are just catch-all removal. Cast Out can obviously get anything non-land, so that's really important, and it can help draw cards too, but mostly we want it just for an option that can take care of literally any headache that we have at the time. And then Fumigate, I'm putting in against the Zombies matchup mostly, but against any hardline aggro. Fumigate's going to be really, really good, you know, and again, we have the option of Fumigating like three of our guys off the battlefield and just getting them right back you know, the next two turn or two. So Fumigate could actually possibly be in the main deck, but I have a fear we're running way too many five drops already. And here are your power rankings right here. A final score of 59, which is pretty impressive. Just shy of 60 is not bad for a deck that's only going to cost you like 30 bucks. And if you wanted to take out like an Angel of Sanctions or two, you could get this thing down to 20, 25 dollars. But even 30 bucks is a really reasonable price for a deck that's better than it might look on paper, you know? This deck is super resilient. 22 of our creatures can come back from the graveyard. We've got some really cheap, decent removal in the Heary's Wrath. is more or less a board wipe that we met, we minimize the you know downside of in this deck that's pretty cool um lightning axe just costs one mana to destroy nearly any target <laughs> right now that's not bad fiery temper is essentially a lightning bolt a lot of the time and angel of sanctions can take out any creature that is 14 different removal pieces in this deck all of which are pretty good it's nice to have angel as an you know unconditional removal piece we have got a fair amount of decently powerful cards in this deck even if it doesn't look like we do on paper all of our creatures come back incredibly resilient and we've got at least a decent passable defense in the deck as well if we can get into the later turns then we can just really start getting all of our dudes back and take advantage of the fact that we've just like totally manipulated our opponent's side of the board for the first few turns. So this deck is a little bit better than it might look, especially 
at the local level. So I want you guys to try this thing out. It might impress you. I'm tapped out for this one. That's all I've got for now, but I really want you guys to try this one out. You know, proxy it up if you have to, or you've probably got a fair amount of the cards it would take to build this deck already anyway. So give this thing a shot. Let me know how you feel. I know it looks super weird. I know it seems like kind of a dumb concept, but honestly, deck has a lot of staying power and might be a little bit better. It surprised me. <laughs> it surprised me, is all I'm saying. I did not expect this deck to pick up as many games as it picked up. So, you know, give it a shot. Let me know how you feel. Let me know how you change it. All that stuff down there in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, like the video. Helps me out an awful lot. But, but, what are we doing next time? Next time, I've got a battle set up between big whites, just basically a white mid-range deck that plays white cards, <laughs> or, and it's at least somewhat budget, more budget than the other option, which is Abzan. I actually think that Abzan mid-range is a pretty good option when it comes to answering this format right now, and I'd like to discuss that. So, which deck do you guys want to see more? Big white pseudo budget, probably aiming at about $100 there, or Abzan, which will be a very competitive deck that will cost a pretty penny, but again, I do think has a lot of answers that I would like to talk about. So, <laughs> let me know which one you guys want to see more down there in the comments. That's all we got for now. Make sure you sub and hit the bell for the notifications so you get the deck texts when they come out. Check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash sbmtg. You can look at our SoundCloud. Got a link to that down there in the description. Check out our Twitter at sbmtgdev. So much, <laughs> so much YouTube spiel, but I think we're at the end of it now. I'm Dev from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.